Greetings everyone and welcome back to Tier No the Brave New World with a Code Talker update. I'm your host, Mr. Collective Security Treaty Organization Lover. We gotta talk about dissension in the ranks. The sea churned beneath the docks, ever restless. Spraying an intoxicating scent of salt and our freedom across Magadan. Two officers of the Federation Armed Forces pass a bottle of cheap vodka back and forth. This alcohol flowed and the good judgment swept along with it. The army man pat his temporary friend on the back. You know, I have some good news. The RAPP swept the elections in Bologna. The Air Force officer rolled his eyes. If I see Ivanovich, sometimes I want to knock that stupid grin off your face. You don't like to put us in shukshin, Nikolai? No, I don't, Nikolai said. He removed a smuggled cigarette from his jacket, lit it, and took a drag. I voted for Pokrushkin in the elections. I've stuck with the Patriotic Party even since then. Why? Nikolai raised an eyebrow. Why would the Pokrushkin we just be some province in another nation? I feel like I'm obligated to return the favor, no? Vasily let a harsh chuckle. Sure, it has nothing to do with the Slyloviki favoring the Air Force, of course. No, it doesn't, Nikolai said. Unlike the army, we can make we make do with what we have. We don't want politicians for extra support. Vasily shook his head. And I took a sway of the vodka and looked out of the sea, laying his head down on the frayed wooden uh, railing. I don't think you should vote for the all Russians, he muttered. Even if Pokrushkin did a good job back in the day, the only things that the Silovi could care about is lighting their pockets. No, you don't get it, Nikolai said. Uh, we don't have any of the quality of life without a growing economy. We need corporations to thrive. Every one of Shukin's reforms has been attempting to strangle Phoenix or butcher severe. You might want to live in a backwater, but my kids deserve a better future than that poor crap democracy you're voting for. It threw a cigarette into the ocean. Actually, you know what? I I'm done here. I'll see you around, Vasily Ivanovich. Opinions are like bottles. Everyone has one, and your friends don't want to see yours. Or hear yours. I always hated that. Opinions like buttholes. I always hated that. That seems so crass. I could be very crass, too, but come on. Establish uh, Ross Cosmos, but it was fine for this thing. It's fine for this. If one told our countrymen ten years ago that this idea was even possible, you'd be seen as crazy. With their victories in the West now, we may be able to show the world Russia has become the newest superpower. There really is no space program outside of Germany, Japan, and America, and we have a long way to go. But Russia's looking to the stars for centuries with wonder, amazement, and vigor. From the times of uh, Lomonos Lomonosov. During the era of the Tsars, even during the misguided years of Bukhara, and every journey starts with a single step, and this one shall be one. And to add in scholarship program. Russia is more than the land that it exists on, uh, it is its people as well. Now we're going to become a superpower, where people cannot produce the same type of minds that brought the world into the atomic age, as such. We made a deal with Titan to bankroll students that demonstrate their talents in academia to further their studies in the best universities that money can buy. Titan will also provide these students access to some of the most cutting edge research facilities in Europe to further accelerate the growth of our academic base, of course, Titan. Is not willing to do this solely for the good of Russia, we've decided to lower our corporate tax rates for Titan and provide them with more favorable government contracts to sweeten the deal for them. To Aspera. Colonel General Matei Popov uh, watched over 100 Russian airmen exercising through a one way mirror. At his side, Maxim Nikitin, Nikitin of Titan Aeronautics, obsessively scribbled notes on a worn yellow pad. The pair looked down at the airmen like children staring at ants for a time. They were happy to simply to observe. Then, as all children do, they began to crush the insects. Give me the background of Canada A8, Popov said. Ace fighter, shot down four German bombers during the attack on Moscow, um, Nikitin said. Disciplinary record shows the charge of insubordination was dropped after A8 was awarded for heroism. Almost certainly because of a bribe. A squash A8, Popov said. D4 is trailing the others. D4 was injured in the Finland campaign. His leg is still healing. No time for the Popov says. Squash D4. Before he squashed D4, we should consider PR, Nikitin said. We need at least one Kazakh or Tajik or Bashkir. D4 is served honorably and would make a stellar pro uh, mission photographer. Popov grunted, we don't have time for a wound to heal, and Mr. Nikitin, let's be clear. It's a military project, one word to President Shukshin, and your bosses are out of a couple billion, so he said, smiling. Take a second before you think to bring up PR again. D4 is gone, I thought you'd see it my way, Popov said. When these exercises are over, I want you to cut the bottom 40% of performers. Overall, remaining. Christ! Hope you believe in him, Popov said. Where we're, where we're going, we're going to need all the help we can get. F9 just got off the treadmill. Already squashed. Out of the bonuses to get off the treadmills. I'm sorry, Nikitin said. Over 10,000 to the, to the first five to get out the treadmills, Mr. Nikitin. These programs are the biggest, most important thing you or I will do in our lives. Maybe more important than the Moscow campaign. Project Zorya needs personnel who can look farther than their wallet, Popov said. More important than Moscow, you can't be serious, Juno Popov. I am, Popov said. Moscow is a symbol of our heritage. Moscow is the past. This project will define every Russian generation from now until the end of time. And if you put that, that, that in a press release, I'll kick your butt. Oh. The president shall pay Baikon Nur a visit. What the... Barnacles? Stage 1. It's not accessible yet. Site construction. After careful deliberation, we've chosen a site near the banks of Sierra Darya to construct the Cosmodrome, a research launching complex dedicated to the Federation's space exploration projects. We need significant manpower, money, and expertise before anything else can commence. While our design bureaus wrap up the rocket designs, the Cosmodrome must be built. 650 millions of USD and currently 0% complete. Uh, stage one by Conor. Uh, 
Okay. Oh my god. Also, oh, we still have this global complex, but, but they did peace out, so Georgia's still here, and they do have Batum, and Armenia's still here, so. Also, I, we have Georgia now, and Azerbaijan, because instead of the Caucasus Federation, because I thought that would be right to do, and I think it is right to do, um, but I wanted to see what the other one was, and we got Azerbaijan here uh, with uh, Hedar Aliyev. If you wonder about him, please go ahead. We've got to talk about the citizens elect as well, though. We have the Black Gold, very nice. The Nagorno Karabakh issue. We have Hedarism, so. Of course, these guys are here too. They have a looming fiscal crisis, German tactical bombing, oil crisis, and a bunch of socialists down here. And then there's Georgia. There's Spring Mountains. There will be blood, as well as Tavasupali Sakartevlo. So there's that. Um, also, I did take all those parts of Finland because I figured, you know, why not? It makes it look just look better overall anyway, so whatever. Um, and I didn't get, I can't get Belarus at all. Also, I continue the war with Ukraine. Not Ukraine, but uh, Romania. <laughs> Russian and Ukrainian war, whatever. Uh, but Romania. Well, I took them out fully because the other peace deal, demanding them to surrender, gave us these provinces, but didn't give the Ukrainian these provinces. We got these, uh, we got Mogilau, Central Transnistria, and Odessa as course for the Russian Federation and not Ukraine. So I just went with the other option. And we took out uh, Romania as, and got him as a puppet. And then we also got Bogek and Odessa, and I just gave that to Ukraine. So, um, so there's that. Other than that, not much else has really happened. Also, there's another American presidential candidate. Presidential candidate. Last time we saw like the South's favorite gentleman, but now we have a communism party, or as president of Ella Baker. Um, so Ella Baker can become president. She doesn't have a focus tree either, and she's a hard-on communist. I don't understand. But the event. If the quality of beer's fertilizer bothers you, Mr. Yegorovich, then I highly encourage you to seek or figure out a recipe to get a chemist or a cow to synthesize it and start selling it to your neighbors. Entrepreneurship is always the answer. A large crowd of farmers in front of the stage started mumbling, some with a hint of approval, others scoffing shaking their heads. President Shukshin continued on his rant. Again, if there's evidence of wrongdoing on Sibir's part, the RAPP would be happy to investigate and, if appropriate, enforce the legal regulations but without evidence our hands are tied. One of the farmers raised his hands amid the sitting crowd, Mr. President, if I may interject. Shukshin gave him a quick nod. I appreciate that you're listening, but these statements fall flat on his face. You're not a farmer. You have no idea how a, pro a proper fertilizer would behave. Your party's full of lawyers, professors, and bureaucrats. I don't see how any of you can understand what we need. Shukshin nodded. I agree. How many of you try to change that? We try to fix it by choosing you, Mr. President. It's very nice of you, my friend, but I'm one man and my party's filled with lawyers, professors, and bureaucrats. We're the farmers with the initiative to make sure our system works for you, too. If you don't want to rely on the expertise of those you don't see as competent on the issues, then you must take office yourself. I must say I must agree with everything you've said. I'm not competent to speak on the issue of fertilizer, rainfall, or tractor maintenance. The Federation needs people like you to represent your way of life. We need bodies from all spheres of life to participate to the best of their ability in order to properly serve the citizenry. The Federation shall be filled with cacophony of voices, each crying for their own betterment. Also, I did discover that, that there's something wrong here. Oh, what is this? Conscript military personnel. The army possesses many young men perfect for the job. As the Federation secures its place among the powers of the world, we expect the coming decades to be relatively peaceful. If the army has no real enemies to fight, they should be waltzing into the threat zone of Kazakhstan. We disappear the Zezdograd. The city of stars, many of our workers' cause, are already quite deceptive with its current name, Baikonur. However, some of our government are arguing for additional security measures. These officials claim it's better a Baikal Nord is wiped off the map to avoid potential sabotaging from hostilities in Europe and make the purpose of the space place clear to its citizens. So, honestly, the idea, the idea doesn't sound too bad. Not bad either. 0.05%. Uh, let's do that one, because we can afford it for right now. Um, additionally, like I was trying to say, uh, the Project Millennia has an issue. It has a giant issue with it. It's stage four. Look at this. It says it's 99.2% complete. Every month we'll put 4% closer to completion. This is bugged apparently right now. Um, because there's nothing else we could do about this. It's almost impossible to tell that there's something wrong. So that's, that'll tell you which stage is actually complete. And right now it's bugged. It's completely bugged, which really sucks. Unless there's something else I'm missing. Zoria. Shukshin opened the manila folder on his desk and his head began to spin. There were countless charts, figures, facts, numbers, literally hundreds of sheets of paper arguing for his attention. Um, did I read this before? I think I read this one before. Oh. Maybe I'm gonna read this one again. Please go ahead. I read this one earlier in this campaign. It's 1977, though, everybody. Happy 1977. Uh, okay. Disappear the Zvezdorov. So this one's glitched to heck. The settlers are done, and we're still trying to core the rest of these places. <laughs> so. 
Well, I'll do this anyways, but additional infrastructure. Uh, I'll probably do this one. Divide site procedures. As this is the first time we're building anything like this, many of our managers and workers are still somewhat unfamiliar with advanced electronics being shipped in. To avoid accidents on set, we must reserve some hours and invest them into informing classes so they do not mishandle anything worth while. Aside from that, maybe we can slip some patriotic propaganda into these collapses. Classes. Collapses? Classes. Look at that, nice. Continue the dream. For the first snow is a Nova Siberia. It's going to wake up the war. We've carried the torch of democracy. From there, we expanded to central Siberia, then reunited the cold eastern wastes of Russia. So where the cold tapestry of the Silovika first began to crumble, with the president Shukshin coming out on top of the race. After creating a long struggle on the men of the Federation across the roads, and finally unified Russia under the banner of white, red, and blue. Or red, white, blue, and and red. Now we must continue this dream and still hold the torch high above the oligarchs and corrupt. We will expand the amenities and freedoms of the Federation so people may truly prosper like never before. Give them a popular conservatism, Democratic Socialist Party of Russia, and the Russian National Liberal, uh, Russian Social Liberal Party support the additional reforms. University of Moscow. Federal Insurance Act. Ooh, encourage small business. Now that the oligarchy has been strangling... Uh, Russian prosperity is at long last slain. Our, our citizens have given the freedom to act the independence in a truly free market. Although many of them have been discouraged to do too so much as try, or did so under the thumbs of many as the big mega corporations. We must now usher in a new era of small business. Russians ever will be able to create their own piece of the economic pile with, with government subsidies towards them and financial aid. The people of themselves, not only successful business independent of corporate oversight, but a healthy competition will be able to stimulate the economy for salmon as never before. Me with ultra visionaries. In order for us to cultivate the best engineers and researchers possible for our space program, we must use all the best minds Russia has to offer in what once was a Komi Republic. There's a group of scientists dedicated to the cult of progress, one once known as the Socialist or Ultra Visionary Movement. Some say that would be a waste of time to hear out these people, owing to their odd political views. Inviting them to our advisory research and technological development board will be a political uh, <clears throat> uh, gamble as we have yet to see the theories bear fruit, but the failure to work with them will deny ourselves the great resources that we have for the taking. Knowledge. Ensure uh, stream of supplies. Many talented individuals are not willing to go to the middle of Kazakhstan due to its weather and the lack of resources of food and amenities. This trivial of things must not stop the cosmodrome. Besides, artificially building up the local economy may prove help in the long term as we won't be going anywhere anytime soon. Rule of law. It's crazy, Anatoly, uh, a disheveled worker shouted. That darn aerosol is spraying all over us and the machine is sparking. We're going to burn and die if you don't fix it. Deep in Chile bins, in the subterranean factories once run by the Stalin statelet, a gaggle of factory men stood around a tall platform upon which their inscrutable and, uh, and supervisor, Anatoly, uh, oversaw them. The heckish military factory was created to build the newest machines of war, tanks using special aerosols and metal scrap those liable to light up, a dangerously possible fact when in the distance. Screeching metal scraped against another, causing sparks to fly. Anatoly struggled or adjusted his tongue, goggles frustrated, lying in his face. Uh, are you all men or what? This is normal. You've never complained before, Ivan, he droned from a megaphone. The gathered workers began to murmur, and for a brief moment, Anatoly's features softened a bit in fear of what a mob could do, hearkening back to the days of the Narodniki. But something strange happened. Ivan, the leader of the bunch, pulled out a slip of paper. The way I see it, Anatoly, you've got two options. You can make us work, and tomorrow, assuming we don't die in an accident, all of us will go to the safety bureau and report this frag fragrant, uh, fragrant, fraudulent uh, violation. The law isn't good for crap beyond incidents like this, honestly. But your bosses won't like it when they see a fine in your factory for your screw up. Or you could give us a day off and have some, someone fix the dust in the air. The sounds of machinery screamed all around them as Anatoly's hands began to shake in frustration. Who do you all think you're talking to? You think that fine means anything? You think they're going to do anything beyond sending me an angry letter? It began to scream. You don't know anything. This new president's got you all thinking a lot of crap. I run the plant. I managed production for years while you sat around and did the same thing all day. I have an education is ran and an apologetic, uh, an uh, apoplectic screech. The workers then did something that truly found the supervisor. They each grabbed a spare glove and filled it up with metallic dust shavings. Evidence. Actual evidence that can be used in a case. Shakily, he picked up his microphone. Fine, go home. Build additional infrastructure. Oh, wait, we have liquid reserves? We have half a billion. Where do we get this money from? Oh, I'm not going to complain. I'm going to take that money. Uh, 1%, 1%, 1%. Uh, although Baikonur is an ideal spot for the Cosmodrome, Soviet air infrastructure, which initially happened our efforts in unifying the region is once again proving problematic. Of course, we're going to forcibly divert all the trains and trucks to the side, so in compensation, new railways and roads must be built to enable faster transportation of goods and people. Land of opportunity, my friends. Uh, oh, well. Hey, yeah, improving poverty as well, game. Cosmonaut. 
uh, A New Hope. A few weeks ago, the film star, uh, a simply titled Star Wars came to theaters across Russia. The film initially performed relatively poorly due to the large part of the lack of investment and access across the country to theaters. While in Soviet Russia had quite a few film-related artists, Russian society has lacked any serious effort to reboot the film industry due to the numerous other aspects of the economy needing the resources and investment. What theaters in Russia does have are few and have only been built in the last few years in major cities. But a dramatic change has occurred, with many initial viewers encouraging others to see it, causing a turnaround in the box office. Today, in cities like Moscow, Samara, or Kursk, extremely long lines go out of every theater despite initially being believed to be a failure in the Russian Federation. The film has become the highest grossing film in the Russian market and reached a cult-like status. Most of the praise for the film comes from the rapidly growing youth population who have fallen in love with the modern classic. <coughs> Many wonder why the film has touched the nation so deeply. Many point to the film's themes of fighting against an evil will struggle the Russian people are all too familiar with. Others point to the revolutionary technical effects. Some simply argue uh, that this was merely the right film at the right place, regardless of the reasons why Star Wars has captured <clears throat> the hearts of millions and ignited a fire in the nation. Many have called for the development of modern occult cultural arts and for Russia to build a film industry to revival Italy, America, or Japan. Some rumors have even suggested that there are those interested in convincing George Lucas to film portions of the next film in Russia to show how far the nation has come. Maybe good will triumph over evil? Maybe. Maybe not. Land of opportunity, of course. Our monthly progress. Activates. Our monthly progress. Spend more money. We'll be closer to go by 1%. Of course, we do want to get this one done, too. Could use more stability. More growth. Ah, we're gonna wait. Yevgeny's wife, Loressa, stood in the doorway of his study in only an account. There it's late, you've been writing for hours, come to bed, you can start again in the morning. Evgeny looked up at the clock through his blurry eyes. It was just half past one, of course. She was right, but he still had much work to do. He was so close to finalizing his plans, plans that would get him out of his job on the docks. He and his close friend Vitaly had put aside just enough money to start a new business. It was an import export business, but they still had to work out the Evgeny, are you listening to me? You have to work tomorrow, and you'll be getting barely enough sleep as it is. She crossed her arms as she waited for him to respond. Sorry, dear, he mumbled. I'm finishing up now. Let me finish this one last draft. Even as he looked at his wife, his eyelids felt heavy from exhaustion. Larissa sighed, sigh, but lovingly, a small smile appeared on her face. She nodded and left the study. Returning to his work, Evgeny began his final draft of the plan for his company. He would deal in the clothing and jewelry from America and electronic parts from Russia. The company would operate out of the ports of Magadan and Vladivostok in Los Angeles and San Francisco. The headquarters would be in a building just a few blocks from the Vladivostok docks. Vitaly had already spoken to the landlord and was offering a fair price. Now all they had to do was get the loan from the bank and then provide collateral. Evgeny carefully placed his pen uh, beside the completed outline for his company, before looking at yesterday's newspaper. The headline read, American imports from Russia at all-time high. It's just swelled with hope. Two decades ago, no Russian could dream of the nation they now built. And yet here Evgeny sat, ready to ride the coattails of Russian prosperity and make a fortune for himself. He could already see it. Uh, him and his new American-built Cadillac and his wife adorned with jewels in mind in Australia, like driving up to the newly bought Ocean Side Villa. And being rich, my virtue then shall to be to say there is no vice but beggary. Oops. Yeah, I'm gonna wait to do that. Um, the photon rocket, one percent every month. Borrow American designs, two and a half every month. I kind of want to go to the photon rocket instead. Twenty-eight, two billion USD, one half billion USD. Um, well, we better race down that way then. Down here, I want to get through all this stuff, but it also doesn't matter as much anymore. Develop the West. Second Siberian plan. Ooh. Ooh. Inflation goes up. Growth goes up by 0.35%. More growth, though. But I want to rush, rush to get this one, probably, honestly. Requires keep the funds flowing in the Cosmonaut. So we need both of these. Uh, by on the, by Condor Cosmodrome. All great journeys must begin somewhere, and our new space program is no different. The creation of a launching off point from the Federation's stellar excursions must be finalized before any further efforts can be undertaken, for which we have the perfect location. We found the Bonacore Cosmodrome in the heart of the southern Kazakhstan, our first and only spaceport. It will become the headquarters of all of our further ventures into the stars, and is an added benefit. Further, our bonds with the peoples of Kazakhstan upon its foundations will build a space program to conquer the cosmos. Oh, the so Kurdistan does exist too, which is weird. But whatever. What are we looking at? 5. 12% growth, nice. Keep the funds flowing. 
In order for us to be able to keep this project afloat and touch the heavens, we must keep stable, consistent funding. But funneling money into these projects ensures that we are able to see the project to completion in a timely and efficient manner. We have already sent out much, so much money to other projects and social services, so why hesitate to extend these same funds to the same the space program? Although this may be seen as a vanity project by detractors, for others it, would be, it will bring Russia back onto the world stage. In order for us to re truly reclaim the title of the fourth power, we must do what very few nations have done. We must get touch the stars and we need the funding to get us there. Communications issues. Good. Now, Tesla, twenty-eight point four seven uh, zero megahertz. Rakov, do you copy? A voice blurred by the intercom. Twisted through layers of static. Copy that central. Switching the frequency right now. Darn it! Lavro almost slammed his hand against the desk. The communication system on board the shuttle were screwed. No, beyond screwed. Despite all the work they put in, half the frequencies were useless, and the other half nearly so. And no one had any idea which, which part of the equipment was at fault. Boop. The console in front of him rang, a white flash light, but there was no response from the inter intercom. Lavra leaned over the microphone. Lorakov, can you hear me? Boop! The white, the light flashed again. The response came, but not in the correct form. Lakov was receiving, but Lavra couldn't hear his response. The engineer rubbed his weary eyes. How did... How, I just calibrated this stupid system this morning. He pressed the intercom system again. Lorakov, I'm not receiving you. Go back to the previous frequency. Boop! This is Lorakov. Can do you call... Lavra slammed his hand in the intercom button. Right, uh, the blasted thing is all static now. I give up. Go back to the start of the routine. We need a stable frequency. He fiddled with the tuning dial, muttering to himself, I should have been a darn rocket scientist. Wouldn't be stuck here threading, threading a frequency needle. Management breathing down my neck. He found the original frequency. Boop. This is Rykov. Lavro, you don't think they're going to fire us over this? Others will suffer for us instead, friend. The engineer chuckled through clenched teeth, I suspect. And the antenna. Uh, we should send it back to R&D instead of constantly trying it for band-aids. Easier that, like that. Rykov sat on the other end of the radio. I suppose I'll just be another set of numbers out of the pile. Can't wait to explain this to the suits. Honestly, I'm ready for this to be already over with. Listen, I'm frustrated too. Lavro screwed up his eyes, took a deep breath. But we've already put so much effort into this, we can't give up now. Boop. We sacrifice now so the idiots of the future will have the comfort of calling our ways primitive. And by American experts, the U.S. has seen many successes in the field of space exploration. Indeed, we must learn from those involved with the construction of American spaceports to understand what it truly takes to t raise a bastion of progress from thin air. We are 5% complete. Every month we'll spend $6 million. We'll see us get three and a quarter more uh, towards the way there on a monthly basis via the country overview. For sure. Um, I could probably do this one. I should have said stream supplies instead first. Yeah. So this one. Oh, look at that. We're green. I love this. This is really cool. Keep the funds flowing. Conscript military personnel. One percent. Spend more money carving a giant. Um, it began as a foundation, all as all things do. Dozens of men spent dozens of days digging in a great trench upon the chosen site. Thus came forth the womb that would bear the fruit of Russian ingenuity. A great slab of concrete was poured and sheltered from the rain as any father would shelter their only daughter. At midnight upon the seventh day of the month, as a concrete lay drawing, a lone soul crept into the poorly secured building site. Thread the Rigmulier, at the last sign on the Velmir the Great, offered a prayer to Peru and pressed his severed finger into the drawing concrete, a sacrifice for the strength of the Russian people. Then came the bones. A great beams of steel, carved from the flesh of mountains, lay down upon a plain swept by the tools of men. A month passed, and the spirit of the great monument was outlined by its fathers. Two months, and the beast took shape. Three, and the bones knit together into a skeleton. And again, Malyar sn uh, snuck into the launch site and uh, painted a sacrifice of his own blood upon the holy girders. A sacrifice for the hope of all Russians. Next came the fourth, the beast's veins. Pipes imported from the factories in Samara and twined with the septic heart. Great ducts of uh, flimsy aluminum clumsily pressed together formed the titan's lungs. Wires laid down in a mirror across the vastness of Russia to become a nervous system. By now, the government has erected security fences around the half-born creation. Mulyar dug under the fences, entered the facility, and smeared his breath, his phlegm, and his bile upon the naked electrical system, a sacrifice that Russian should be spoken in the heavens. Finally, the labor was complete. A skin of fiberglass and bricks stretched over the beast, covering its blessed organs and completely leading in the facade of normalcy, yet Yuri, as Frederick was known to his work team, stood silently as an orthodox priest cried false blessings to the Barnall Space Center. His accurate incense and meaningless utterings billowed over a gathering of every soul that had labored to compete the, complete the center. But it's useless. Nothing hallowed of Perun can be taken from him, not the earth, nor its men, nor humanity's creations. All of it belonged to him. And so for Perun's glory, and for the glory of the children of Hyperborea, Russia would march into space unopposed. A prayer spoken in the dark is still heard in the heavens. The cosmonaut. Who shall walk the distant worlds so unlike our own? Who shall become the legends of the stars who journey the infinite cosmos? Shall be the American ast astronaut, the German Stendenman? No, the travel of the stars will be a symbol of our own motherland, the courageous cosmonaut. 
With a new generation of spacesuits designed to protect the wearer from the dangers of space while ensuring peak mobility, the cosmonauts of Russia shall become the face if stellar exploration as the Federation pushes humanity ever onwards towards the future. Nine million US dollars, huh? Eleven and a half percent. Not ready yet. Keep the funds flowing. The cosmonaut. We're going to do the photon rocket. I, we've got to do it. Uh, I, as an American, I want to have American help. By the photon rocket. One of the final preparations to be made in first foray into the cosmos is the development of a rocket to bring the Rus first Russian to the stars. It's imperative that the final design be as close as perfect as possible for to ensure a safe, clean liftoff out of the atmosphere for the ro jo rocket's chosen cosmonaut. We shall employ cutting-edge photon propulsion systems in conjunction with other more conventional methods of rocketry. This technological feat will not be without its cost, of course, but the price attached to safe takeoff cannot be too high. With completion of our method of lifting Russia into space, we are one step closer to a manned celestial excursion. Remedial classes. Gentlemen, this is the microprocessor. Professor Magnus Onward said, and I've traveled all the way from Uppsala University to demonstrate how it works. He stepped away from this podium and began to walk through the gaps of occupied desk, holding what looked to be a tiny ink-black block of metal no thicker than a fingernail. As he spoke, dozens of Russian scientists, businessmen, and officers stared with a determined focus. Specifically, this is a four-phase system, all 8-bit slice chip. Designed in 1969 by Lee Boisel and Mar by March of 73, this chip was incorporated into 374 major industrial sites throughout America for the simple fact that it runs faster than a horse on steroids. By November of the same year, the design was purchased by the Department of Defense, and four-phase systems was locked into a permanent exclusive contract. By January 74, the chip design was leaked to the Reich spies in May of the same year. The German government hired myself and three other Swedes to study how microprocessor technology could be incorporated into future Reich aerospace endeavors, including a potential mission to Mars, he said. He smiled. And locked eyes with a nearest guard. Considering how the war went, I don't think they'll be heading into space anytime soon. And word turned back to his audience, chuckling at his own joke. I've been led to understand that the Federation currently operates its computer systems primarily through integrated circuit technology, he said. A microprocessor belongs to the integrated circuit family in the same way that Homo sapiens belong to the hominid family. My team anticipates that fully integrating microprocessor technology into your current electronic information systems will result in a 40 to 45 percent increase efficiency increase in the conduct of Operation Zoria. You see, uh, yes, the gentleman in the back. A heavy set bearded man in horn rimmed glasses lowered his hand. Yes, it's fascinating, thank you. I've actually worked on a similar project in the Republic of Komi several years ago, but involving brain matter rather than a metal circuit. You see, we hypothesized. Yes, thank you, my friend. Well, plenty of time to discuss past experiments after I finish my presentation, Professor Onward said. Now, in regards to the structure of the microprocessor, don't explain computers to layman, it's much simpler than explaining sex to a virgin. Oh? Eclipse USA. Uh, Stellaris. We've done it? No. Once the space program pursued by the Third Reich was considered an exemplar model of mankind's endeavors to touch the stars, but with changing times and the smoldering ruins of the Reich resulting in its suspension, the premier space program of the world has become that of the United States and NASA. If the Russian space agency or, or, or program has become truly great, it must do the American stellar ventures uh, as they did to the Germans, nothing short of eclipsing them entirely in scale and success. The shining new paradigm of exploration of the stars will bear neither the swastika nor the stars and stripes, but the tricolor of the Federation. When removed, you get uh, three more political power and more stability. It's not bad. It's not really worth it as much. I do want to do at least stuff as well. Through debt, we shall accelerate to the stars. Oh, yeah. Uh, Kultasov, you're stepping out of line with your cynicism. President Shukshin took a sip of tea. Carefully tracking the concerned RIPP representative, pacing around the room. Our funds will be fine in the long run. We're proposing a one-time expense after that. The corporations will take the burden. Both politicians have been stuck in the gridlock of personal debate over an hour. It was getting ridiculous to think that such a petty request had run aground, that such time had been wasted when other work needed to be done, but slowly but surely Shukshin's patience was running dry. Slowly but surely. The sand of frustration began to fill his cup. But still, took a sip, he'd forgotten to add sugar. Representative Koltsov was still pacing. The poverty of statistics in the caucus are overwhelming. Shouldn't we divert taxpayer money to help our Federation's allies? This space program was way over-budgeted from the start, and now you're coming to us, Atanan, asking for even more funds. What is this madness even for? We govern the largest country on the planet with the riches that fill our bellies for the next century in spa spaces. So do people in. How will visiting the moon help the common man? Because we need to make our dream into reality, my friend. It's why we're elected and it's what we'll maintain our, for, our for our voters. Without it, we can't enact a getting reform, nor can we unleash the corporations. It'll be a message to the people in the world as well. A message that we're climbing to new heights, any complacency, and we're back on our feet again and equal to any of the great powers. And excited to spend money in useless tech projects. We decided to do so, yes. Koltosov chuckled. The party decided. You decided. I and those represent did not decide. He sees us pacing just as the threshold of the door. If I wasn't in this party right from when we were huddled in Barnall, I'd walk. 
and so are the others in my block, but we've come too far. He shook his head in disappointment. While you're daydreaming, I'll try to coerce Titan into a more privatized approach to our little space program. But understand this, President Shukshin, we won't accept an another overrun. The sky, sky of dreams is obscured by the clouds of doubt. The cosmonaut. I don't care how much money it takes. We are going to do it. Uh, Apire ad salem. Cameras flash and microphones buzz as Maxim Nikitin's third before an audience of dozen, dozens of journalists. In the very center of the gaggle is Dmitry Morozov of the All Russian Central Broadcasting Group, Russian Inf Sabir Central Broadcasting Incorporated. A known conservative nationalism patriot counterbalancing Morozov was a Katharina Balabanov, a bilingual leftist from the Moscow Herald. Beyond the two Russians were ink waters of ink wasters of every nation, two Americans from the San Francisco Times, representatives of the Asai and Sankai Shimbun, a senior editor of the Press and Journal, and even a cohort from O Globo. But Nikitin, it was heaven. Our nascent space program has been extraordinarily successful, Nikitin said. We project that the initial space stage of development and infrastructure production will be completed two months before schedule. Behind him, a 50-meter deep pool shimmered with danger and azure beauty. Our intention is to advance both German and American designs through collaboration with former members of the both programs. Did you know the senior most member of the German space suit design team defected to the, to the Federation? Turns out his wife was Polish, he said. The gaggle of journalists fiercely scribbled on every detail. The Polish angle, that was a story they could run with. Today we're testing two things. Number one, the integrity and uh, agility of the latest spacesuit models. Number two, the performance of the team members under conditions comparable to microgravity, he said. He reached into his pocket and pulled out a handful handheld radio. Gentlemen, please begin to, uh, the test. On the far side of the normal pool, eight besuited men and women dove into the crystal depths. Only a single cable, one for each, kept them from falling over to the bottom of the artificial sea. This is mission leader Zatsia of the, of the radio craft, beginning her descent at time 1423. Nikita smiled as the journalist leaned forward towards the radio, straining to hear Zatsia's speech. Proceeding normally, all is well. Wait, scratch that, Satyev said. Mission leader confirmed the problem, General Popov said hurriedly over the radio. Sir, Valentina's suit just sprung a leak at the left shoulder joint. Her suit's beginning to fill with water. A request permission to abort the exercise. Back to the drawing board and develop the facilities. In order for us to reach the stars, it's of course a necessity that we, can, we construct stations from which our stellar excursions can launch and operate from. It may prove to be a costly bill for us up front, but it will be necessary costs that the Federation must bear in their dreams to venture further beyond the confines of the world. By constructing the proper facilities to make such an adventure easier and within reach, it costs down the time to transport equipment to what would be many dispersed sets of facilities to instead a few centralized locations close together. Truly, this is the path towards bringing, bringing Russia into the modern age. The military angle. The sun shined brightly through the window of Colonel General Mattia Papa's office, cutting its way through the thick smoke from the cigar. He glanced over. The design plans for the new rocket propulsion system the engineers had designed, supposedly. It's going to be sending a rush into space. Mattia grunted disapprovingly, moving to tap the end of a cigar against his ashtray. Any rocket strong enough to send a rush into space ought to be pointed at their enemies, not at the stars, but... President Shukshin ordered that he ensure the rocket's viability, and he was never one to disobey a presidential order. The Colonel General heard a knock on the door, of course. <clears throat> the engineer who designed this darn engine had finally arrived. Come on in, come on in. Mateev yelled towards the door as he waved a cigar at them as if that was somehow quick in the process of opening. Vladimir Kopyalov entered, a short fellow with a mustache that looked like a rat's tail. Say, boy, sit. The Colonel General sat forward against his desk, causing the metals on his chest to jingle against one another. This engine? Tell me about it. Well, sir, Vladimir began, he said opposite Mateev, it's similar to the rockets that the Germans used to send their men to the moon. We've been following designs of the rockets that they used during the Second Patriotic War. He took out a pen from his breast pocket and circled parts of it a diagram on the desk. We made great strides in understanding how they were able to store liquid oxygen in great enough quantities to produce the combustion necessary to lift the rocket into orbit and make maneuvers while there. <clears throat> That's what this engine is. It's powerful enough to get a man to the orbit and bring him down just where we need him. A rocket that was able to change its trajectory while in orbit? Mateyev's mind raced with possibilities. With this, Russia would be able to strike anywhere on the globe. No nation would threaten their security, as they all could be hit with a Russian rocket at any moment. And if the engineers' comments on its precision were accurate, they would be able to strike military targets without even having to send a man into the country. Perhaps Shukchin was onto something with a space program. Tell me more, Mr. Kopyalov. And of course, we're still doing Eclipse of USA. Uh, closer to the go by 5%, more political power, more stability, which we don't really need, and more worse part, which is pretty nice. But we'll also get the event on schedule, and we already read it earlier, as I, like I said. Um, this one over here, develop the facility, so. And we'll come over here. Insurance Act. Oh, not bad. And we still the conflict status, unfortunately, for some reason, but whatever. Uh, oh. Overtime. <clears throat> Maxim Nikitin realized that the project was starting to turn sour when the third worker quite literally a collapse on the production floor. He was in a cell before Magnitogorsk. No one important, but it worked for 20 hours with two half hour meal breaks when the, he simply collapsed from his lack of sleep. As the on site paramedics scrambled to his side, Maxim realized something needed to be done and marched into Papa's office. He entered without knocking. Juno you know, Papa was reviewing some paperwork when Maxim entered the room. Well, what the heck do you want, Nikitin? I'm very busy. I think you need to draw back the shifts, Maxim said. Another one just collapsed. If this word gets out, the PR. 
think I give a darn about PR? Well, do you think anyone gives a darn about the PR? Uh, Papa said, Mr. Nikitin, once the show is in the air, no one will care how the sausage was made. No, I'm not planning on inviting any reporters in here, but if word leaks, so what? The public will forget it in a month. Nikitin stood, took a stand behind the chair across General Papa's desk. He put his hands on his neck crest and began to squeeze. General, if you overwork with these good men, you're increasing the possibility of an accident. That's not going to be acceptable to an aeronautics. You need, you need this launch to go well, just as much as we do. The last thing we need is dead astronauts on our hands. General Papa stood up. Suddenly the room felt very small. You already know we're going to triple check every system on the shuttle before launch. No, we have a deadline. I'm going to meet, the, meet that deadline. If some of the men on the line can't meet the expectations the president set, then we'll find the men that can. Now get out of my office. Oh boy. That's a fast way to kill off your astronauts. Academic base, research facilities. Let's do the Federal Insurance Act. Let's see what it's like, but after on schedule. Igor fumbled with his coins as he tried to grab them from his pockets. They scattered on the floor of the phone booth. Frustrated, he rested his head against the glass wall of the booth to give himself a moment of rest. He was so exhausted that he nearly fell asleep right there against the glass. The only pull from Summer by a superior calling for laborers to return to work in the next few minutes. He scrambled to pick up the coins from the floor and shove them in, dialing home. A few moments later, his wife picked up. Hello, this is the Nogovitsian residence. Dina speaking. The connection wasn't good, and Igor had to press his receiver against his ear to understand her. Dina, it's Igor. I'm going to be home late again tonight. No, uh, don't talk yet. I have a lot, don't have a lot of time. They're already calling us back. I know you, or you're mad at me. I can hear it, but yeah, I know you've asked me to come to my talk to my supervisor about it. But you know these dudes want the space the uh, shuttle completed by the schedule, so they'll work us to the bone until it's done. There's nothing I could do. Heck, one of the guys who was wielding the lower casing of the shuttle nearly fell asleep. Thank God someone caught him before things went to heck. Igor stopped to scratch at his eyes in the hope that he coxed him into staying open for a whole shift. Allowing Dina to get a word in. Maybe she'd protest, she suggested. Get the press involved. I'm sure someone will listen to you about the conditions, heck. If that doesn't work, can't you organize with the other workers? You could even call one of the DSPR representatives. That might be able to, might be able to help. Uh, and this is a project wrapped up in gosh darn politics and national prestige. People don't give a darn that we're being overworked. The cause is unpatriotic and darn your traitors. For a union, no one gives a crap what we think. We won't, won't change until it shows in the sky. Cutting corners with rockets? Isn't that kind of dangerous? Yes, it is. <clears throat> There is one before. No, I've not. Shipping construction materials and electronics from far off Russian cities are obviously most efficient. It would be much infinitely cheaper if we were able to secure some source of quality materials from Kazakhstan itself. We would just seek to use this opportunity to invest in local municipalities such as Kazel, uh, Kazel Orda and Zeskashkan. This shall produce uh, unemployment and promoting urbanization in the regions. Yeah. The Eagle soars. We are ready. Ensure to steady chimney supplies. Yeah. Like, I'll spend as much political power as I need to. Or as we need to, really, um, to get all that stuff done. So we said this was bugged earlier, fate of the settlers, regional integration. Uh, let's keep working with one of these, though. Uh, we should create an act that provides general assurance for the well-being of the Russian people. The privatization of healthcare has led to nothing but the exploitation of our citizens' well-being for profit and benefit of large corporations at the be benefit, at their benefit. Of course, this does expand our budget considerably, may lead to a heavier strain on the economy. Medical costs like dental work, yearly examinations, and optometry, alongside other former basic cares, will be included under the basic right for all citizens under our flag. The people demand change and action towards the improvement of the quality of life, and we'll give it to them. <clears throat> Athon. Vasily can walk into the hangar, and his breath uh, left his lungs. Before him, a tired and lay sl slumbering, a beast in white and blue that would fulfill the dreams of three generations, is enormous, more than a hundred feet long, as tall as ten men, and tall enough that one grew dizzy upon looking upon it. The wings were like that of an eagle, every curve crafted with ingenious with genius and tension. The top fin of the space shuttle bore the Federation's flag with bold stripes of newborn white, deep sea blue, and sunset red. The carapace itself was stark, unmarred, and every inch stronger than the bones of the building. She was immortal, unstoppable, so the man or spirit or goddess had conjured up to bear their nation to the moon, not a machine, not any sort of creation of man. But suddenly he reached trembling and laid his hand on his shuttle's wing. This is, is everything I'd hoped for, he said. I dreamt, but I never really thought I'd get to see it. He takes a step closer. This is a summary of everything I fought for. Shushin smiled breathless and turned to the menagerie of the hangers on that followed in his footsteps. General Papa, sir, without your supervision, this project would not have succeeded. Thank you for all your hard work. The general saluted his face, a professional, neutral, anything for Russia, sir. Anatoly Yohontov cleared his throat from amidst the crowd. Shushin smiled, dimmed a bit. Yes, Mr. Mr. Yohontov, we haven't forgotten Titan's contributions to the effort. Mr. Nikitin, thank you for your hard work. Maxim Nikitin stammered out of thanks and whispered that was cut off by his boss. Call us when you're ready to start work on the next shuttle, Mr. President, Yohontov said. Of course, Shukshin said. He ran his hand down the shuttle's smooth, cold exterior. What a beauty, Alexander. How long do we have until she's scheduled to launch? Well, Krushkin shoved his way through the crowd, a clipboard in hand. Only a few days, Vasily. We just have to get her transported to the launch site, fueled, and get the cosmonauts on board. Then that's it, Shukshin said. He threw his head back and left. After everything we've been through, that's it. We've won. Um, 42% of the way. We've invested 400 millions of USD, and it's currently 42% complete. The minute of tomorrow. As soon as he arrived home after school, 
Goody Goody rushed to the living room and, and turned on the TV. He tossed his back back onto the nearby sofa and plopped himself only a foot from the screen. The logo of one of the, of one of the national news broadcasters lit up the TV. His mother mumbled, mumbled something from the kitchen. Yes, Mom, he scooched back an inch and finally saw what he anticipated for weeks. Yuri Romanenko and Vladimir Titov, the two astronauts who would be flying into the, the, flying the shuttle into space. Goody Goody giddily bounced his legs. The reporter, a woman named Natalia, appeared next and began the interview. Gentlemen, you will soon be the first Russians in space. How does it feel? The camera then cut to the astronauts. You already spoke first. It's a great responsibility. I grew up out west with a lift off a bombing stretch into the 60s. Many family and friends were rightly fearing the skies, but I think that if we continue to fear the skies, then we let the Germans win, so... I feel we must show the world that the Nazi terror campaign failed. The way the Russian people persevered. The camera now cut to Taito. The reporter asked another question. Did you, ten years ago, see yourself as a future first Russians to see the Earth from space? How surprised would you have been to see yourself here? I'm sure I'd be shocked, Taito replied with a laughter. Or with laughter. I did not study engineering or flight because I thought I would go to the stars. I did it because I wanted to get the Germans a bloody nose in the war, but I'm glad I got that education, since now I can put it to a noble cause. And the next generation of pilots and engineers wanted to fly off to war. Because of us, I can fly to the stars. The future starts here. And with this act, there's all that. We can empower the Slovaki music for more. I know Major Bill's being voted on right now. Okay. Yeah, we'll bribe them. Because everyone else is really friendly with us that we really care about, so. It is what it is. Oh, we didn't get the RSLP. Yeah, that's probably a mistake. Whoops. <coughs> University of Moscow. Uh, Moscow, in spite of her efforts to restore to the glory once held, continues to struggle in this fight. A fight for relevance among the world and both of them in Russia. As many prestigious institutions were left entirely decimated by decades of German occupation and if we were to reverse these wrongings, we must begin from the ground up. A bright brand new University of Moscow will be constructed in the very heart of the city. While not only providing renewed prestige Moscow, its construction will benefit the education of the Federation's youth and help to attract young Russians to the city. The future of the Federation of Moscow begins with its reconstruction. Yep, yep, and yep. Almost 78, my goodness. Nice. And semi modern. Man, I can't believe I actually got that that one already so far. And we're finally done with the line doctrine nineteen seventy seven. Go figure. Conscript military personnel. Uh, go ahead. We're gonna write through all that stuff as much as we can. And what do we have? Sixty eight point seven five percent unity, that's pretty nice. Uh, 286, as of now, that despite previous efforts, universal health care is still lacking in Russia. Russians are still increasingly scared of getting sick in any form, and the society now cares a deep stigma about minor personal health issues. In the West, optometry, dentistry, work are all paid for by the state. President Shukshin understands further expanding health care will discourage Russians taking care of modern diseases of the rich. Besides, paying generously for the doctors might encourage more to take the Hippocratic Oath, increasing our capacity to attend to the sick. Well, that, that many votes, we're doing... We're doing alright. Doing alright. Oh, as soon as I click that one, now we fight American experts again. Um, Rocky Man's Paradise. Ooh, more GDP. I like that. Ooh, that's not bad either. But Metropolitan Mes Moscow. The Federation's capital, Moscow, is among the most distinguished cities in the world. It has survived conflict, plague, blood, and tears, and yet, in spite of those who would like to see them torn down, uh, the sacred halls of the Kremlin still stand defined to time. Now that we restored our beloved city's glory from the atrocities and injustices that suffered under the German jackboot, we should make Moscow the glimmering metropolis it should have always been. Russia's first throne will once more shine in splendor with sweeping modernization and be made uh, more accessible to all peoples of the Federation. <clears throat> and we'll go read about profiting in the Federation next. Cool. Now where are we at with this? The yearly deficit, not good. 78% is okay. Growth is 8%. Inflation is pretty darn high. In all honesty, I might do the inflation thing here. <coughs> we'll see. Um, inflation critical. Yeah, that's pretty bad. You know what? I guess at this point, I guess we should probably do... Yeah... Profiting in the Federation. Uh, Lubya looked out in the classroom. With each face, she passed over the burden of concern in her heart of a group. Every group. It was a severe watch witch's job. A student in marketing invented for her to mold the simultons in front of her into stock to, ready to tame the chaotic movements of the free market. There are a few wild cards in the audience tonight, a few men, a few women who could grow into worthy entrepreneurs. For now, they're too green to make any proper judgments. Her duty was to change that, of course. Click. She activated the projector. Uh, the first slide leapt, uh, leapt in front of the class, a representation of trucks, containers, and warehouses. Tonight's topic will be logistics, she said. Now, some of you may be concerned about we're skipping over issues pertaining to the service sector, but I assure you, logistics applies to every branch of service. Logistics is not about means, but about taking on a mindset of efficiency. Let's begin with a thought exercise. Suppose for a moment that you want to open up a business furni uh, furniture business. You collect your restriction fund, buy out the property instead of a warehouse to store the finest Siberian pine wood for your shop. Now, a question arises. You have a recommended choice of a local supplier, and the larger corporate supplier located 40 kilometers farther away. What do you choose? A blonde man in a suit raises his hand, the local one, of course. Why? Because there are people I know, and those wealth directly impacts the quality of life everyone around me. 
and how do you ensure that their business will grow proportionally to yours to keep up with demand? How do the local laws on forestry impact this expansion? What are the other options? Why can't you make deals with both? You said those were the options. It's a mindset, friend. You're the one supposed to dig and ask questions to, until you have a plan. For nothing stagnates and kills business quicker than sentiment, sentimentality. Energy expert prospects. Russia's filled with natural abundance of gas, oil, and other natural sources of energy, which constitute the core of our... Uh, export economy. The time is going to use these resources to have their full economic potential. One of these trade deals across economic blocks and to export gas and oil throughout the global market. In the aftermath of the oil crisis, nations rolled over so of how demand in the markets are to be filled, especially America, which can weaken and exploit to bolster international relations and stimulate, stimulate both our domestic markets and the markets of our trading partners. Change of heart. A small bar in Novosibirsk lit with neon magenta hues to attract youth was tuned into the local University of Novosibirsk, colloquially known as UMN, student run radio station. Ah, oh, but this one anyway, screw it. Uh, the thought may be strange, but much as a Playboy magazine is surprisingly fascinating interviews, the local radio station was somewhat known as the for having a diverse range of new music from all over the world, and occasionally interviews with figures in Russia well beyond the scope of a school radio. The UN's uh, new source was known other than former president Alexander Pokrushkin, all around the bar. Um, the usually noisy and lively bar was well contained and quiet as they listened to the students and the former strongman. Mr. Prokrushkin, a young woman, spoke in a crackle tone to the radio. The presidency is highly criticized despite the fact that the, during the election, who spoke consistently of how united Russia during the smutta. Do you still believe in your words from back then? Were the Siloviki, the your cooperation with them, uh, the reason Russia was reunited? There was a moment of silence, punctuated by an older man's grunt, until he responded more clearly. It is true that the capitalist government we ran in Novosibirsk, with the aid of the Siloviki, was uniquely able to bring investment and modernization to our people. I stand by that. The bartender sat before Prokrushkin's distorted voice came through again. But there's a difference between a capitalist democracy and a capitalist plutocracy. Capitalism is good, but when it stops democracy, when it stops the ability to check its own excesses, that can cause problems. So, the woman spoke again, you sound like a lot like President Shukshin. Would you say you agree with him? Would you join the RAPP? But Krishkin laughed. No, I would not join the RAPP, but I do think Shukshin made some good arguments that have proven true. However, <clears throat> I will warn you all, while democracy is well and good, we cannot go so far as to support communism, or even this democratic socialism. Now, destroy our economy and kill jobs. Socialism of any kind led us to ruin along with unchecked power. Reform, not revolution, is key. So do we pass it? <clears throat> Excuse me. We're looking okay for now. Yeah. I don't know why. I just want to keep being friendly with them. Just because we can. So, seriously, do we pass or not? I guess we'll read Broken Man's Paradise then. In the days of the Tsar, the working man was oppressed, beaten down, belittled, and enslaved to serve. So however, the winds of change sweeping in our federation. We'll lead our nation back into becoming a paradise for the working man. Workers will show strong, strictly enforced protections and compatible to any of the country across Eurasia. As a result of our policy, we can expect immigration to Russia to skyrocket. Our nation will become a workers' utopia. Thousands flock to our urban centers seeking employment in every sector which calls for our labor's efforts. Our economy has been given a great boon by and for the people. Ten years ago, the future of Russia seemed dim, but today our federation shines brighter than ever. Seriously, do we not get a vote here, or no major bills are being discussed? Do we pass it or not? I think we did, but is it glitched? Is this still going on? All right, then. The second Siberian plan. I kind of like, I like this one a lot. Or do we develop the West? I kind of like this one, but we're going to probably help everybody. Let's help everybody. Whilst the past years have not been kind of rushed, no party had worse than the West, left in an administration that did not consider the residents to be human. Being subjugated, starved, and killed without care for decades. After the last war, West Russia has been almost entirely destroyed. But now with life returning to normal, we must bring the country forward in time and shake off the specter of Nazism haunting it. It may not be easy, but the challenge before us is one that it must be done for the sake of all of Russia. Or a second Siberian plan. Since it first came under Russian control in the 16th century, Siberia has been a neglected afterthought, and the Bukharin's premiership in the Soviet Union saw the implementation of a Siberian plan to transform the region and bring it out of irrelevancy with some successes in total but halt with the beginning of Barbarossa. In the chaos that followed Siberia, it was left with little resources, doomed to remain forgotten for decades more. Our eastern dominion has a vast amount of untapped natural resources, an industrial potential that cannot be neglected. We should double our efforts to utilize this land and bring Siberia to greatness as well as, as an equal partner to the Western Territory. Um... Honestly, I want to develop the West. Actually, let's get a look-see here. Uh, let's do this first. Uh, let's see. Do that one. Do this one. Do that one. Yeah, this seems like everything's free of bugs just yet. But 1990, that's a bit a little ahead of time. We'll start doing some of this stuff over here. Um, Moskva. The GDP is 1.45 billion. Or do you just get more growth for the economy? Honestly, I think I'm just going to go with growth for the economy. Second so Siberian plan. We've, we've been focusing on the West a whole bunch anyways, and we don't want to forget about our, you know, core constituents over there, too. 71%? Not done yet. 
Oh, we're so close. 1%. Increase GDP by 2%. 1% closer. Yeah, I think I'll go to this one next. That's what we get. Develop local manufacturers. Monthly progress. Nice. There we go. Oh, uh, do we have something else here done? Oh. Anti-air. There we go. Today? Anti-tank, okay. <laughs> Russia free zone. In order to bring others into the sphere of influence, we must use a wide variety of means to increase our economic power. One such avenue is getting nations in the free trade zone with Russia that leave. Very few nations hold the vast amount of natural resources that we have, and their needs can be more than fulfilled by the vastness of our lands. We shall therefore establish a Russian free trade area and attempt to diplomatically gain support of other nations all throughout Eurasia to further economic interest and to foster a positive relationship among equals. By doing this, the Russian eagle will expand its sphere and its allies will grow stronger on the world stage. Our GDP growth increased by 0.33%, and more GDP will increase by 2%, for a total of 2.5 billion. Nice. 0.5, that's not bad for the how cheap it is. Um, 0.5, 9%. Can we get enough here to get to at least one more percent? We'll see. Center of our Eurasia. We're the undisputed master of Eurasia. No other nation in the region has a much raw natural resources, manpower, and industrial might as Russia. Uh, we border a wide variety of nations from the Central Asian states to the Middle Eastern nations, and now that we stand unified, we move to rebuild our own sphere of influence to survive without the Ionites back in the cold prosperity sphere. We will do so by covertly finding factions of these countries that favor us, and give them reasonable incentives to come to our side over the out of the Nazis of the Japanese. Bit by bit, we'll lay the groundwork for the future ascension of the global superpower. But first, we must secure our own backyard. Makes sense. 1% here. 0.5%, but you get more GDP, which I do like, but still. I want 1%. 8.5%. So it really is going to take three months. Um... So we do one more. Oh, I'll just do it one more. Why not? Conscript military personnel. Buy American. Oh, we can fight American. Which one do we want? I want the one that gives it more GDP. One million more dollars. We'll spend two million more dollars. Oh, active for ninety days. When removed, one percent more. After thirty days, you should get one percent. Mm. Yeah, that sucks. Okay, whatever. Center of Eurasia and Solaris. I think it was one earlier, though. After long laborious and demanding series of preparations, the Federation has reached the precipice of the payoff to the groundwork it's worked so tirelessly to delay. A mad excursion into the cosmos. Russia's many people, scientists, and the President Shukchin himself has anxiously waited his moment since the beginning of the space program. With a step, Russia's the nations had reached for the stars and firmly brought them into the grasp of the ambitions of the Russian Federation to leave behind the stratosphere in place of the interstellar stratum. <clears throat> no one on Earth will be able to deny our feats as the Federation becomes not only a peer, but a leader in the global community. Um, as we're waiting to keep doing these. Um, we'll have to wait two more months anyways. 75 days, my god. 60 days. 30 days, you might as well not even wait. Just do this one first. Save our political power for whatever we need next. That's kind of disappointing, like what the heck happened here? We voted, but nothing happened. What happens when your opposition likes you a lot? That's a good question. Um, in the meantime, uh, it's going up 11... 0.669%. Nice. Inflation is still very high, but we're still working on it. Deaths is only 4.21 billion. Um, it's still going down. Hey, we got a little more billions. Nice. Not bad. Oh, we got, we do we have more? We, uh, what? Wait, what's going on? Why do we keep getting more money? Why did the money stop? I want more money now. 11.36 billion. Deaths is 3.88. Not bad. Um... I guess we'll read the fourth power. Since after the Second World War, almost is common knowledge that the three nations collectively dominated the New Order. However, with the Russian phoenix rising above the ashes of the Second Rus Russian War, the Federation and their allies are challenging the status quo more than ever. Now that our nation's nuclear capabilities carry out space flight and enjoy its sovereignty, freedom and equality like no other time period, we can finally list our motherland as a fourth power. Though maybe the youngest will be the ones leading the brave new world that is the 21st century. Cool. So we have to wait 60 more days for that. Um, so this is kind of buggerino, it looks, seems like, or, I don't know. The, not everything here is really super fleshed out yet. And the Iberian, we actually have the Iberian Federation, look at that. And the Manuel Gutierrez Melado, Melaf, Melaf, Melado. Oh. Oh, they're an Elephant Observer. Wow. Good job, uh, Iberia. Not bad. Happy June. Uh, we're going to go over here and I'll do that this one. Oh, we don't have political power for that, but whatever. Alright, so we got three days left. So then we should be done. This with part of this, right? So we're 100% towards the goals of the current stage. 
Spend $22 million. Okay, it's 9.5% closer to there. Get some free infrastructure. We just keep spending money here, too. Um, there you go. In the meantime, where are we at with this? Ah! Click here to access the Bionic Core Cosmodrome. From there, we shall enter stage 2, the assembly and the transportation of rockets. How oh, oh. Is this supposed to take this long? Once we're done, we should undertake the flight. We still have to do the plans in reality. Our design periods have come up with the viable designs for a manned space flight. However, we still have yet to try to put the plans in reality. This means assembly, transportation, and maintenance of our rocket prior to the launch. In addition, old Soviet air infrastructure must be upgraded and improved to provide our men with the ample amounts of water, food, and fuel. Once we're done, we should undertake the flight. Oh my god, it's going to take so much, so long to get there. Let me do up here. Stage 2 rocket. I'm gonna, I love this, but I just... And I know it's going to take forever to do, too, but oh my gosh. Well, this is the closest we're going to get to a Glenn presidency, and this is a Russian version of it. So it's not bad. And I love how this just like pops up and then fades out to the left. Well, I guess not that time, but whatever. I guess we're still working on this stuff here, even though Project Millennium failed for us. Which sucks. Sucks, 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 sucks. Look at that. What? Why can't we do anything here? Air train personnel, even though it costs us money and does nothing for us. Whatever. Um, I guess we'll keep working on with a lot of this stuff. We're just going to sit here and just kind of keep shoving more money into everything here. Probably to build an additional infrastructure, so. I'll see you when maybe, maybe it'll get done eventually. Russia launches the first manned space mission. Celebration has filled the streets of the Russian Federation today as President Shukshin uh, announced the success of the nation's first manned excursion into space. President Shukshin has made funding Russia's fledgling space program, Ros Cosmos, a high priority since winning a election in 1976, and the program appears, appears to have finally borne fruit. International response has been overall very positive, as American representatives to the Federation have called the mission a triumph and congratulated the country on its success. President Shukshin has stated Russia's part in the exploration will only continue to grow, as international cooperation continues and the rumors of an extensive satellite program and development continues to circulate. Russia's ambitions uh, look to have a great heights as the fourth power takes its place at the start, the first step in a giant leap. Cool. I didn't even look at this stuff yet. Huh. Well, it's all ready to go. Oh, hello. Whoa. I love it. Oh, that's so cool. That's awesome. That's so cool. Oh. Can you watch it again? No. That's cool. I'm, I'm glad we actually saw that. The Stage 3 launch. That's actually really, really awesome. As we're doing the fourth power, of course, here. Now I have a lot of political power, too. We're not investing in too much, but we could. If we really wanted to. Um, more stability, political power. Nah, that's not really worth it. Uh, not, that's not worth it either. You get more manpower, which we don't need that now. I don't mind doing this one because you get more growth. So also I did did use temp tax hike. So that's why we have a time tiny surplus. Real growth is eleven percent. Counting our pennies is actually beneficial right now. Introducing inflation by two point three nine percent, which is great. And so Desk purchases a brave new world, huh? So this is better than counting your pennies because counting your pennies gives you one percent more growth. This reduces inflation by two point three nine percent, which basically gives us two point four nine percent growth right now. So overall not bad. And the dead GP ratio is going down. Fourth power. Amazing, my friends. Is, is that it? I guess that might be it. Oh, we didn't get to do any of this stuff. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry we didn't get to do any of this stuff. I forgot about it. Oh. Uh, oh, why? I forgot about this. Oh, we have liquid reserves. Um... I think I read this one earlier, so. Western China's industrial investment. At least we'll read this. Western China may not hold as much industrial potential as the East, but building new industrial facilities and major settlements such as Jining and Yuquan will strengthen their economy, lifting them from the economic rot that has plagued the region since the sent out Japanese war and give them a decisive edge over the world or neighbors. And when the time comes for their armies to step forth and at last reunify the broken lands of Western China. So Russian military equipment. To put it simply, the military equipment that the clique is rather outdated, much of it not suitable for the field. If the clique is to have any chance in consolidating control over Western China, it will be needing the best equipment possible. The Russian Federation is no shortage of weaponry, especially after the war with Reich, and if we're more than capable of supplying the armies with the best military equipment we can offer. Establish your West Chinese Republic. Um, the KMT has endured decades of humiliation, first at the hands of the Chinese warlord states, then to the Japanese Empire. They've been exiled from Nanjing and forced to struggle in the Qinghai province. It's time for the use of humiliation to finally end. The KMT is now fully armed and ready to step forth and reunite the lands of the western China. No more shall the Kuomintang endure failure in battle, with the backing of the Russian Federation, of course. They will achieve victory over the warlord enemies and take the first important steps in the long journey to reunite China under the vision of the son late Sun Yat-sen, our brothers in Mongolia. 
The people of Mongolia have become reliable allies of the Russian Federation, but they have become a people without a homeland. Divided between Russia in the west and Japan to the east, the majority of the Mongolian homeland remains dominated by the empire from across the sea. The Mongolians in the Federation have called for the west to become an independent state, wishing to rule themselves as the Russian people do now. Our president sympathizes with their wishes, but so much of their, so much of their land occupied, a Mongolian state cannot function long. The Mongolians will have their state. Once Ulaanbaatar has been restored to its rightful owners, rally the nomads. There are many things that throughout Mongolia that the Japan maintains total control over. The nomads are not one of them. The sentiment the Japanese have tried through the occupation of Mongolia, the Japanese have massacred the raiders of the steppes, battling them on the open plains, and buying for control over the vast country. The nomads only seek to rule themselves, but perhaps we could reject the nomads of New Mongolia and rally them against the Japanese in the name of a truly free, free Mongolia, friends in Ulaanbaatar. Though, although Ulaanbaatar is familiar with the rule of the Japanese, our president has friends in the city, powerful and influential friends who can rally the oppressed peoples of Mongolia and lead them forward to victory. We should reach out to Natsagin Bagabandi and form him of our mission to liberate Mongolia from the imperial rule of Japan via its public states of Mengjiang and establish a free Mongolian republic in its place, the Mongolian Rebellion. The Japanese Empire has oppressed Mongolia for long enough. No more shell nations endure such terrible pain that Russia knows all too well. With the Empire of the East distracted with their increasing rebellious puppet state of China, the time is coming to call upon Natsagin to rally the people of Central Mongolia behind him and begin the Great Rebellion against their East occupiers. With the nomads working together in the Russian Federation on their side, the possibility of a free Mongolian city is at last within reach. So, I think that's going to be it for us. Because we have arcade mode, which we're not going to really do. Um, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. I, I wish I wasn't bugged over here for this too. This stuff, man, what the heck. Um, were we supposed to ever integrate the Far East? Because I would have liked to integrate the Far East, too. So, um, it's weird that Poland was annexed by these guys, and we had annexed annex Belarus so that the Germans didn't get them. But overall, I mean, obviously we should have gotten, like, China, or parts of Mongolia, and the KMT over here with us, but that kind of sucks that we didn't. Um, I don't know. It is almost 1980, which we almost hit 1980 in this mod. Who the heck is Stanfield? Um, Stanfield, whatever. Uh, but that was really cool seeing the launch. I love what the devs have done with the Brave New World update, you know, Kotaku update with this mod. This, they've done a fantastic job. What the heck? The Caucasian Liberation Front. Yeah, you should be unrest, but whatever. Um, with that being said, though, <clears throat> please let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. Uh, what would you like to see next? And as well as maybe if, if I look at it, there might be content for the other three presidents that we can elect. And instead of President Shukshin, there are other various presidents. If there's enough content to make a video over, I will make a video over it. So other than that, please, like I said, Leave a comment as to what you thought of the campaign. Uh, consider leaving a like, please. That would help me out. And if you're still watching, thank you. Uh, subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I will see you tomorrow in another campaign. Thanks for watching. Have a good right. Russian. Vasily Shukshin. The rest of your day.